welcome to our AMSA Big Family Day. It's amazing to have you here. I saw a lot of people from Nepal. Cheers from our friends from Nepal. I see a lot of students from Indonesia, some alumni from Indonesia. I saw friends from Taiwan and from Malaysia. And I think that I saw a few from uh, Hong Kong. Yes, and it's wonderful to have you here. And we are going to have, uh, I'm going to pass it to Marjorie. Are you ready, Marjorie? Yes, I'm ready, Dr. Davy. Right. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Davy. Before we begin, I would like to know if everyone can see our slide. Is our slide visible to everyone? Yes. Okay, so what do you see on the slide? Can you guys please let us know? What do you guys see on the slide? No? Okay, I think, yeah, they cannot see the slides, Marjorie. Okay, so, Jonas, it is not sharing. Oh, you can see me, but not the slide. Okay, okay so <laughs> while we are waiting for the slide, I wanted to uh, teach you a little bit on how you can use your screen. In the bottom of the screen, there is a smiley face. The smiley face, if you click it, it will come. Yes, awesome. If they were, you can pick an emoticon that you can uh, you can use to applaud to the speaker or to the person that's speaking or to the ideas that you hear. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Davey. I think we'll begin now. You this, let's go. Good day, everyone. Hi, Pifa Amsa. I am Marjorie, the cute incoming overall chairperson. Oh my God, of <laughs> Amsa International Tenure 2020-2021. Yes, and I'm Yudis, the gorgeous outgoing general treasurer of Amsa International Tenure 2019-2020. So. Welcome. To day one of oh, AMSA Big Family Day. Okay, yeah. clap. So let me brief you. Asian Medical Students Association Big Family Day is a series of events by AMSA Medical Students Association, sorry, Asian Medical Students Association, AMSA International, in collaboration with Asian Medical, Asian Medical Students Association Alumni Club, AMSA AC, with a team live love life love i'm so sorry the event aims to bring to bring the members medical students and alumni medical professionals together amidst the global pandemic COVID 19 to foster bonding and interactions the future the virtual event spans over three saturdays of august 8th 15th and also 22nd of august 2020. i'm so big family day one will bringing you inspiring individuals of the medical industry from our own AMSA AC, all the way from Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, and also Austria. I will now pass the session to my partner to brief you about the virtual venue, Ermi. Marjorie, the stage is yours. So hi, everyone. I'm going to brief you guys on a tour with Ermi. Okay, so welcome to Ermi. So what is Amit? Amit is a virtual interactive platform and also the virtual venue of our event today, AMSA Big Family Day. Next slide, please. Okay. So this is the crew list of the day. So today we have four hosts with us. Velia, the in, uh, incoming VOCE. Edward, Samavir, the incoming VOCI. Jonas, the incoming GT. MCs will be Yudis and I. Hackathon leader on day three, that will be Adam from India. Likes and cameras from our DOPNP, Gabriel Natasha. And we have a few GM and LOs here with us. Please say hi when I mention your name. So we have a few that are still busy right now at work. So we will start with Navita. Navita, can you say hi in the live chat? Woo, Navita. Okay, it's okay. So we'll go next. We'll just go through the list. Sheena, say hi. Okay. 
Hi, Yishen. Yishen, please say hi. And we have Kai too from Taiwan. And we have Time from Thailand. We have Vanita from Malaysia. And we have Ziggy from Philippines. And we have Jamir from India. I'm so glad to have this whole amazing crew with us today. Next slide, please. So these are the people that actually make this event happen. And we have two great advices, Dr. Davy and Madam Lily Pang from Ability. Thank you so much for making this happen. If you have any queries, please let our GM or LO know in the live chat and they will be more than happy to get you through. Next slide, please. So how do I sign up for this event? Congratulations to all of you that you guys have successfully signed up and you guys are here right now. Next slide, please. To access our official event website, you have to register for the event with a laptop or PC only via the Google Chrome browser. So to those that are not using Google Chrome and you guys are using Safari, I can say that your internet connection is amazing that you guys can do it. And please edit your profile to your organization as in the chapter that you come from. Next slide, please. Some of you might be struggling right now, so you can't seem to access Amit well. Please recheck the following. Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. Make sure that you're using a laptop or PC only to access the website. Make sure that you're using Google Chrome to access the website. And make sure that you're using a functioning set of mic and speaker. Final result, refresh your tab and close other applications. Next slide, please. Okay, so I see that some of our GMs have gone around and helped you guys to like edit your profile. So to those who have not managed to do so, please rename your designation to your country capitalized with underscore your name. Okay, so this is an example. I'm from Malaysia, so Malaysia underscore Marjorie. Please set your organization details to this format, AMSA dash your chapter. For example, if you come from Japan, then it will be AMSA dash Japan. If you come from Kazakhstan, AMSA dash Kazakhstan. And please insert a cool profile picture of yourself because, you know, when we want to go through the attendee list, we might actually catch up with old friends and it would be great if you put your picture so we can know who you are. After editing your profile, you might not see the amendments immediately. So please refresh your tab to visualize them. Okay, next slide, please. So now you've entered Emmy. Right now you can't see any tables because we are live. So when we end this live session, please choose a table and have a seat. Socialize with your table mates and a table can only accommodate a maximum of four packs at setting for today and next week. So please, please go to other tables when the table has already reached a maximum capacity of four. Avoid roaming around when the session starts you might miss important points by the speakers. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. We prefer if you raise your hand or type your question in the question tab. That would be best. If not, then you can actually just type it in the live chat section. You can send emotions via the smiley button that you guys have been doing down there. You guys are amazing. You guys have tried it. So please try more of it and we can actually see it on stage and it is really motivating for us. Thank you so much. And if you can't see your friends, please stretch or expand your table window to be able to view all of your other table mate screens. You can choose the layout at the bottom ribbon of your table. There are three layouts, so please uh, explore them later. Okay, next slide, please. So why we ask you to use PC or laptop, the platform is not fully supported and established on mobile yet. So the live streaming is delayed by an approximate of 30 seconds. We also have our uh, technical team from Amit itself here today, and they will be more than happy to assist you if you have any technical issues too. Next. I'm still not fairly and confident with the platform and some of you might want to surrender. I wouldn't encourage you to do so, but if 
it would be great if you can actually schedule appointments for personal dry runs cumulatively via your RCs to the General Secretary of AMSA International, my friend and colleague Jun Jun Ngan Ramatsani from Indonesia with this email address. You may schedule appointments on any day except for the event days that uh, that actually fall on 18, on the 8th, 15th, and 22nd of August, 2020. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is a collaborative event between AMSA International and the Alumni Club. I really want to thank the doctors and the professionals that have been helping us out throughout this whole period of preparation. Again, with our philosophies, knowledge, action, and friendship. Here marks the end of the briefing. We hope that you will have an enjoyable time. I will then pass it back to my partner, Yudis, with an opening game for all. Ready to go, Yudis? Yep, I'm um, sure. Um, so everyone be ready because we are going to have a short game before we start everything else. As usual, the game is Kahoot, like everyone knows. Let me share. Okay. Can you guys see the Kahoot? Yeah, so oh. type it. Uh, uh, you this, I think it's not up yet, but you can try it out. Maybe we can give Dr. Davy just a few minutes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Dr. Davy, the floor. Hi, is everyone. I am very, very excited to be here. And do you know something? This actually um, didn't come to pass because uh, because we intended to have this event. This happened because of, of, of obviously, we know that uh, AMSA AMSC 2020 um, was canceled. It's a um, it's very, very sad situation because of uh, the pandemic. And uh, during this time, uh, AMSA Alumni Club, uh, supposed to do something too, and we always do something during the AMSC uh, period, and we uh, we cancel our own event, and our team uh, think hard on how we can uh, we can pull people together and do something, and we think of an online event, and this is this is an online event. We uh, spoke to the AMSA International. Hi, let's do something together. Do you have anything to replace? the AMSC and the AMSA International at that time, the outgoing uh, OC says, uh, his name is uh, Adrian. Adrian is uh, is not here, but Marjorie, the incoming OC uh, was, uh, both of them says, yes, let's do that. So because of this, then we come to this big family day. The big family day is actually was an idea proposed by Marjorie. So brilliant Marjorie, we have a big family day. And uh, then all this uh, hard work of preparation of two months actually comes to today. We are very, very excited to have you here. And uh, you and this is going to take us for a very fun game. And we're going to go through amazing speakers and a lot of interactive time with each other. Use this time well and make as many friends. Meet people that you don't know and exchange contacts and keep in touch with them. You know, think, treat this as the real conference, like you are in, instead of in London, you are in global conference. All right, enjoy. Thank you so much, Dr. Davy, And thank you everyone for attending today. I really love you guys. While you this is uh, searching for the screen, uh, if you notice in your right hand side of your monitor, there is a raise hand, attendees, chat, questions, and setting. The raise hand is a very powerful tool. It will uh, be able to get you up the stage and grab the mic and tell us about yourself. Okay, so I'm giving this back to you, this. Okay, I think it's on, right? Yes, it is. Yay! Okay, great. So yeah, you may type your the game pin seven seven nine six nine two, and yeah, I'll be waiting for two minutes. Okay, I can see Vera. Yeah, you log up. Oh, it's blurred though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, 
It's blurry, right? It, oh, okay. I'm so sorry. It's blurry. Uh, can I type it for you, Yudis? What is the number? Seven seven. Uh, seven seven nine six nine two. Nine six nine two. Yeah. So far, we have thirty nine players. I'm still waiting for a lot, a lot more. Yeah, I'll be waiting for till for five twenty five. GMT plus eight. So yeah, we have 64, 65, 66. The number is still going. Okay. It's 95 players for now. 96, 112, 113. So uh, the question for this Kahoot is actually like, um, I'm such general knowledge. So I, I hope everyone knows the, knows the answer for the 10 questions and is this Kahoot. Okay, one minute left. And I'll start the game. Do you know something? Hi, Yudis. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hi, we can now, what we can do is that we can break it uh, to a group. And everyone in the group can share with each other about a question. I want everyone to get to know each other. I want you to say a kind of food that uh, you like and what is the hardest for you to give up if there is one food that you need to let go what kind of food that is the hardest for you to give up okay so we can uh, have a small break of two minutes and each person in the group will have 30 seconds to tell about themselves okay um i'm so sorry dr Devi. can we continue to the kahoot since it's okay not very... wonderful yes. okay. Okay, okay. I think we can start the Kahoot. Is it still blur? It's better now. Okay, we can start. Okay, okay let me start the game. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Dr. Day. Okay, let's begin. Three, two, Okay, the question, the answers are in. Okay, six of you are correct and 39 still answered an A, all rounder medical students alliance. Okay, so we continue to the next question. Okay. You this? You yeah. this? I'm so sorry. Oh, I, I think, think oh, yeah, the so internet sorry. on your yeah, the internet on your site in Indonesia is quite bad. Maybe um I take it over from your site. Is that okay? Okay, sure. Okay. So I'll share my screen instead. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Thank you. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, guys, please join this one. Come on, guys. Okay, I will click start when we reach 188. 88 sounds like a good number.
Come on, guys. Okay, let's start. Okay, this is a really basic question. <laughs> okay, so next, congratulations. So the second question, what are the three philosophies of AMSA? Come on, guys. I think I will only put 10 seconds for this. Okay. That is a little too long, so next. Okay, great job, guys. Knowledge, action, and friendship. Next. Question number three. Where is AMSA International's headquarters located? This is a tough question, I think. So we'll see. Oh, okay. So everyone, it is at Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. <laughs> it feels weird saying it myself. Congratulations. Okay, so question four. Below are the founding chapters of AMSA, except... Except, guys. Okay. Great job, guys. You guys are good. Oh, so we still have Rehan at the top. Congratulations. So for question number four, a five, which chapter is going to host EMC? I guess everyone knows about this. I think so. Yeah, they will. Everyone is looking forward for the next international conference. Yes. They should, right? Okay, yeah. let's see. Yeah. Okay, what is wrong? <laughs> Many people chose <laughs> Nepal on purpose. Okay. Wow, congratulations, CAW. I wonder who is CAW. Okay, so question number six. Which chapter is going to host AMC? You should know about this. Yeah, I was anticipating the MC this year. And then because of COVID. Yeah. <sighs> but here we are, we're at the air meet. At our home. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why? I don't understand. Many people want to go Indonesian Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Probably next year, another year, 2022. <laughs> okay, CC to the RC of AMSA Indonesia. <laughs> oh. CAW is still leading. <laughs> yes. So next question, question number seven. Which of the following is not AMSA International's partner? It's not, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's very easy. Four, three, two, one. Yay. Yes, smart. 
we just had our conference with Alsa and uh, we were invited to their GA and so we are actually a partner of Alsa. CAW is still leading. Ooh, this guy is good. Yeah. So we have three more questions. <laughs> no. Can I cover my... <laughs> you know the name? Wow. I need to know who didn't pick the correct answer for this. <laughs> Oh. Oh, so someone wants you this to be OC. Okay. <laughs> I will check out who is the 17 people. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think I know the second, the number two player. And the and, number four also. Yeah. <laughs> so what does AMSAC stands for? Hmm. Okay. I think this is easy. Yeah, because we mentioned it already. Yay. Congratulations what? to the 99 people who answered. Yeah. The correct. Who chose? Why? Why you guys chose the <laughs> color? Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Prima shouldn't be playing though. This is unfair. <laughs> Congratulations to Arky and Ed. Okay. Plus Continue the lyric. We are the people of tomorrow. You this, do you want to sing it? No, I can't sing. I'm bad at singing. Okay then. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this song. It's a legendary song for <laughs> the members, I guess. Right? Yes. <laughs> Great, 67 of you know the lyric. Yes, congratulations. And so that marks the end of the duplicate of the question. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Prima, you shouldn't be joining. <laughs> Who is this? Oh, congratulations. Okay, and for the runner up, congratulations also. Okay, so this marks the end of our Kahoot session, and I hope that you guys enjoy. It. And so I will now pass the stage back to my partner, Yudis. Yes, thank you, Marjorie. I'm so sorry about the connection problem. Um, Jonas, can you reshare the slides? So for our first speaker of the day, we we'll, we have Dr. Debbie Mamahit. Everyone knows her. So Dr. Debbie Mamahit will speaks about a different take in medicine. Let me just brief you a bit about Dr. Debbie. Dr. Debbie is, uh, sorry, Dr. Debbie was the membership officer of AMSA AC period 2015 till 2019, and currently the incumbent secretary general of AMSA AC. So she went to countless of AMSA conferences. She also trained as an emergency physician but when kids got diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder she put a stop on her career and start her journey in autism to seek help and find effective treatment she would like to share her experiences and lessons learned during the difficult years currently her kids are in different levels of recovery and she runs an autism center in singapore dr debbie mamahit the stage is yours thank you so much Okay, I am very, very happy to, to share about my story. And I think that you are um, the perfect people to share this story with because all this started when I was um, in your age. It's hard to say your age because I never think that I am older than you. <laughs> so I'll be sharing my screen. And I'll be telling you my story. Can you see this? Okay. Why well, say a different take in medicine? I want to start from 1999. Yes, this is the time when I went to my first conference in Thailand. This picture was taken 
in an HIV positive um, orphanage. Yes, yeah, so this orphanage is dedicated for children born from parents with HIV, HIV positive. And they have um, amazing smiles and these are amazing children. And I started wanting to do a greater thing that uh, for, for many, many more people. So it, it saw the, the seed of my love toward AMSA. And this is me in 2000, and 2000 in uh, Korea. And during that time, I presented a paper of uh, transforming medicine and getting more collaboration amongst different kinds of medicine. And this is me in, uh, in Hong Kong. And this is me in uh, Indonesia. Or oh, this is in Thailand. And actually, the experiences that I had uh, as um, being in AMSA shaped me and was defined me to see uh, it's possible to do things and it's possible to do something different uh, compared to other people. This emboldened me to uh, seek traineeship of uh, emergency medicine in Singapore. I was from University of Indonesia and I went to Singapore to, uh, to do my training and I got accepted and life was seemingly perfect because during that time I found uh, my soulmate <laughs> and I got married and I got kids and something happened. Uh, our children, um, my number one and number two, got diagnosed in autism spectrum. And it was a very devastating experience for us because as parents, we want the best for our children. And during that time, uh, me and my husband often uh, joked, um, which of our kids would be the physician and which one would be the surgeon. And when we got the diagnosis that both of them are autistic and the other has much worse um, in spectrum compared to the other, it really shattered all our dreams. And this is um, when we started to treat them with many uh, different methods, but it didn't, uh, there is no, we didn't see any, any change. And so I started to think that there must be a way, there must be a, a path to go. So I started to join many conferences. I go to many different countries, but then I realized that just by going to conferences alone, it does not really help. So I started to reach out to book writers, to doctors who see autistic individuals. And I met amazing people along the way and they say, yes, you can come and learn from me. So I went through my very, very unusual fellowship throughout the world. So this is with Dr. John Green in Oregon. This is with Dr. Sidney Baker. He is one of the most um, accomplished uh, functional practitioner. And he is the, the guru, the teacher for most of the doctors who learn functional medicine. And this is what I was in Harvard. She's the, at that time was the lead investigator for the special team that is uh, researching about autism in Harvard Medical School. Her name is Kathleen Martin. And this is uh, the very famous Dr. Um, Martha Herbert who wrote about the brain and gut connection. And this is Dr. Timothy Lurie, uh, Timothy Bui in the Lurie Center in Harvard. This is in New York, Dr. Kenneth Bock. And this is Dr. Jennifer Ray up in, um, in Grisham. I actually drove 200 miles and uh, yeah, alone in a rented car because I wanted to see her. It is a crazy journey because I, at that time, didn't really know how to drive myself. And uh, this is me when I was learning functional medicine in Bridgeport University. I went to Mexico to learn to how to regrow the brain. This is me in Connecticut. And this is me in Tijuana. I also learned how to bring down inflammation from the brain from is a hope for cancer clinic and this is in japan it's a very very good center in japan where i learned from dr inui on how to help 
children with uh, brain inflammation. And this is Dr. Avi Harkovic in the San Francisco STEM Center. It's a, it's amazing journey of uh, recoveries, uh, of, of finding ways to recover my own kids. So I actually learned so much about autism that if instead of what we believe, it is a systemic disorder with connection to abnormal human responses. There's so many papers about it uh, that shows that autism, it is a gut and brain issue and inflammation is the key word of autism and this is a paper that shows that gut to brain signaling and emerging evidence of of intestinal inflammation that alters brain function and so we come to inflammation there's so many things when it comes to inflammation there's um even stress lack of nutrients um the sugar that we have in our food the leaky gut, the infection, this all actually makes a person inflamed. And uh, the brain inflammation comes from the body's inflammation. And what happens if the inflammation is not being cared for? This is a video that uh, I would like to share with you, but I think I would rather have Felia to share it. Felia, why don't you share the um, the video from your screen. Yes, can you share your, the screen on the video? This is a video on how children and individuals with autism feel. How they how a truly normal place for other people affect them. And instead of what we always thought that it is a psychology of this, it is actually that I'm not still waiting for me. Look at the way they speak. Look at the way they the way they smell it. It can be so exaggerated. Six, seven, eight, nine. Take my hand. I'm not naughty, I'm autistic, and I just get too much information. Then, what happened? I'm going to share my screen again. Then what happens if these children are inflamed? When these kids are inflamed, then they will have all these symptoms. But what happened with the family of the kids that has this situation? The parents are like what I felt before. The parents got pressurized. They got scared. The doc their doctor will tell them that this is the lifelong situation. This is a lifelong disorder. Your child might not go to school. Your child might not have a job. Your child might not have a spouse. You know, they might not get married. They might not get their own family. They self-blame. They think that it's their fault and they got lost. And all these things are triggers for stress. And their children will feel the stress as much as we thought they might not know the situations around them. These children are very, very sensitive. So they will feel worthless. They feel unloved. They feel that they are the victim of the situation. They got misunderstood. They felt that they're always corrected because their parents are so scared that they will not be able to tie their shoelace or being able to go to the bus and take their own bus. Or the parents will be so scared that they not know how the failure of money the parents are scared that they got lost. So they always felt that they are always corrected. They felt left behind. They felt blamed. They felt talked behind their back. So they all this situation is worsening the inflammation because all these are huge, tremendous amount of stress. So when you see an autistic person, what is being perceived when the child run around and or making 
what is seen as behavioral issues are actually there's a huge iceberg that's underlying condition. The stress, fear, heartache, disappointment, gut inflammation, brain inflammation, brain injury. It's a crazy thing that happens to them. So in my journey to find out the answer, I find that the mind is a very, very important matter to tackle. So I learned to address the parents stress i learn to address the children's stress when i deal with my kids i stop demand them things i give them no expectation i just gave them love and unconditional support and then we can help by bringing down the inflammation in the body and bring down the inflammation in the brain the most important part about being and handling autism by my own experience is changing the fear-based mindset the i cannot think of how this child can live if i died to love-based mindset i think that if i love them enough they will be able to understand that i am always here for them and this is so powerful that when the children feel love then they will learn to trust when they learn to trust, then they will be able to learn. They will be able to identify and they will be able to, uh, to have a better condition in their brain. And these are the pointers. Acceptance, seek to bond. And when you are seeing the child gets better or putting effort to be with you, then you celebrate the child. I think it's not just um in autism situations alone but also in how we correlate with people around us when we truly accept our friends like in um, our amsa we always have this amazing connectedness and friendship why mm -hmm. because we accept our differences and when we have differences then when you are uh, when you are doing like what i like about being amsa there's a lot of cultural immersion and we learn other people's culture. We seek to bond with the differences that we have. And we celebrate it. And that's the reason why we can get connected. The same thing happens with autistic kids. When we accept them, when we seek to bond with them, and we celebrate them, beautiful things happen. And for me, uh, because of all these learnings, I actually come to uh, work with a non-profit organization called Embrace Autism and we run this kind of conferences in many different countries so that we can train parents to accept their child and to celebrate their child so that they will be able to be their own trainers, their own therapists for their own children. And this is my clinic in Singapore. It was open last year and I have seen a lot of great progress and a lot of great improvements of the children that I cared for. I have seen children losing their um, their diagnosis and turn to school and totally unlabeled from autistic to a neurotypical child. Okay, so this is my journey. I went to Japan and I got to speak in Kyoto University and I was interviewed by the local newspaper and the local TV station, and I was appeared in um, newspaper in Japan. And this is my elder son, and no, my, my second son. He is uh, he is not um, totally recovered yet, but he learned to speak. He finally spoke when he was nine years old. Now he's thirteen. He has two word sentence, and he is still learning every day. He now learns a lot and I have a lot of great things waiting for him. And this is my elder son. So he's turned from a child who totally lost his language to a very, very talkative boy. <laughs> he's a talkative teenager and he loves uh, doing speeches and he is in the Toastmasters club. That's what he says. Love is, the always, is always the answer. This is him. 
And this is another one patient that I come across when I was in Mexico that is using this, the same method of treatment. So this boy, when he was born, he was born with microcephaly. And it is not autism, it's microcephaly. And uh, at five years old, he was mentally retarded. He was unable to speak. He was unable to walk. So he was disabled and mentally retarded at five. And his mother uh, came to understand a way to help him to grow the brain. And uh, he actually went through the treatment for nine years. And now he is a normal boy. This boy is from Lebanon. He's 13. His name is Ali and he's a normal teenager. And I would say that I have lived and loved and loved in my journey. And I hope that in these three days, this day one, day two next week, day three, the week after, we will live, love, and love together with our Amsabik family. So I hope that I can, uh, I, I share my story to give you, um, uh, you know, a, a, there is always a future. There is always an answer. Even in our most difficult situation, we will find blessing. We will find ways and we will find doors to be open and we will find people we can help. So back to you, MCs. Hi. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Debbie. It's such a lovely and inspiring story of you, of yours. Yeah, I, we believe that the audience will gain tremendously from the session and we shall now pick a few questions from the floor. So attendees, you may engage in the Q&A se session by raising your hand or utilizing the question tab on your right. Yeah, please upload the questions that are favorable to your preference. So yeah, we'll be waiting for questions okay i have heard i thank you so much i you you are saying uh, faida says it's truly inspiring priya says it's very inspiring sandeep say wow baby says so inspiring okay there's a lot of inspiring any yeah. questions yes uh so wait dr debbie um so questions from uh dr santosh so hi, Dr. Santos. So the question is, what drives you to be always motivated and remain calm? Okay, thank you so much, Santos. It's an amazing uh, question. Uh, I think I I was uh, I was not that calm in the beginning. It was a uh, it was it was I went through depression, and uh, in the in the in the first uh, one and a half year, I think I was in a very bad situation. <laughs> Because I was trying my best and yet I did not see any any uh, any improvement of the children. And I was thinking that, oh no, that is the end of it. And uh, do you know that things that started to encourage me was uh, the friendship. The people uh, whom I, uh, I, I connected with. I remember meeting Eddie in Netherlands. And I think that is one of a uh, wonderful situation where we sing the song again. You remember that? See the children with their cheeks and their laughter fills the air. When we sing in the in the train, uh, there was uh, and there were it was in and the whole um, car was uh, clapping at us and we were we were like laughing at it and. I, I remember being uh, so carefree and so uh, unafraid when I was a student. And then I started to think that, hey, why, why don't I look for ways that, uh, that might, if, if there's other people that can get better, then I will need to look for people who might give me the answer. So that was the first thing that happened. That was the, the glimpse of, um, of um, of hope that I have. Then with hope, then I started to have motivation. And the calmness came only after years after uh, the struggle and the experience. But it's worth, I think the, the struggle uh, worth the, the result. 
And now I, I can calmly talk about it and I can say to the world that, oh, I'm very happy with my, my kids. I, I totally no worries. In them. <laughs> but, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot. But thank you so much. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Debbie. Thank you so much, Dr. Santosh, for your, your questions. And we have a lot of questions like keep coming on the question, se question section. So I'm really sorry about this, be, uh, but we cannot proceed for any more questions since the time. Yeah, so anyone who was curious about the answer that you are questioning, you may join the social lounge later on and talk to Dr. Debbie in person. Yeah, right, Dr. Debbie. Yes, yes, I am yeah. always very happy to talk to anybody. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just want to share you something. Uh, I I was uh, speaking with Dr. Crystal, one of the officer in AMSA Alumni Club. And I was, uh, I was, he was saying that I sucked the energy to, from them for my own energy. And I use their energy to energize myself. And after that, I throw out my energy to them to make them energized. So it's a recyclable, renewable <laughs> energy. <laughs> Dr. Debbie is always energetic. <laughs> Since yeah, the day when I met her. The energy didn't go for uh, <laughs> yeah. didn't go to the Thank you. Um, okay. Dr. Debbie, I I'm wondering if the the participants can actually direct message you if they have any questions because they can't access the social launch during the live session. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Please DM, uh, direct message me, send me your contact. I yeah. am very, very, very happy to, to call you back or you to message you back. You know, you are family and family are always be there for one another. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Dr. Thank Debbie. So I'll pass it Dr. back. Debbie. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Debbie, for the session. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, for those guys who haven't uh has the chance to ask dr debbie you may direct message her and dr debbie will answer it yeah yes thank you once again dr debbie please enjoy yourself at the social lounge